Five. Hi, sharks, audience. I am Natalie, and I'm here presenting to you today the hygiene ball. How many of y'all, all of y'all, including the audience, have dogs? I see a lot of hands. Oh, and some of our sharks. Wonderful. So this product is for all of you. I, like I said, I'm Natalie Sook. I am the CEO, and I'm going to introduce to you the rest of our team before speaking about our product. Our financial director is Nandra Hassan. Our design director is Cedric Sampson. Our production manager is Mahmoud Mahari. And our, uh, excuse me, science advisor, not our financial advisor, is Ro K. So we're showing you today a ball designed to replace a toothbrush for dogs. Now most of you probably don't brush your dog's teeth. We're going to talk to you about why that's important and why you need a product to make this easy for you. And the first part of that, I'll bring you our science advisor. Hi, I'm Brock Dana King. I'm the uh, scientific advisor for the Hygie Ball. I first wanted to start it off with the question of how often do you, do you guys brush your dog's teeth? Now, according to the American Veterinary Dental Society, you should be brushing your dog's teeth at least once to twice a day. And four out of ten dog owners never brush your dog's teeth. So, brushing your dog's teeth can prevent a periodontal disease, which is the number one disease that is a threat to a dog's health. Uh, periodontal disease is a disease of the, the space between the tooth and the gum line in a dog's mouth. Um, I will be going over how the process of the, the periodontal disease starts. Disregarding the video, um, periodontal disease first starts with uh, bacteria that congregates inside of a canine's mouth. It, it is an environment for good and bad, uh, bad bacteria. These bacteria, when together, they form a film of plaque over the dog's tooth. Now over time, the plaque can harden and it can turn into a tartar, which is hardened plaque. And uh, due to this, it irritates the dog's gum line. You can visually see a red line across the dog's gum line. And once the uh, tartar has hardened enough and the space between the gum and the tooth is uh, inflamed and gives way for bacteria to get inside, this can turn into stage four periodontal disease, which can affect a dog's heart, liver, and kidney. As you can see, this is a uh, poor puppy, and if you're not brushing your dog's teeth, uh, they suffer. Now, stage one, like I said, it's, it's still preventable. It's just a plaque, a film of plaque around the dog's tooth. Stage two is when the yellowing kind of starts to occur, the irritation of the gum line, as I said, you can see. Um, stage three and stage four, this is when the gum line is exposed, and this can happen to your dog's tooth. It's, extremely painful, just imagine it have, uh, happening to your tooth. And 80% of dogs will develop gum disease by the age of three. Um, I will be uh, passing it on to our design director who can show you how the hygiene ball can correlate between uh, the effects of periodontal disease. So I will be passing it on to Cedric Samson. Uh, Samson. How's everyone doing? Okay. Uh, like you said, I'm going to be discussing the design of the ball and why we chose this design specifically. 
uh, to knock off the pack and try to take some of the tartar off the dog's teeth so they can uh, keep the dog's health, uh, health uh, prolonged throughout the years. So we chose this uh, ball because in time, you know, a lot of the uh, uh, pet owners, they choose a ball over a bone or any kind of other toy. So we chose a ball because it's pretty familiar with uh, everyone uh, that has a pet. Uh, but our ball is specifically different because our ball has uh, what we call a lot of honeycomb kind of uh, holes into it all the way around, which will allow the ball to breathe. I'll get to more of that into detail once uh, I go through the design. So we chose to have the, uh, the ball have holes in it. They also have these small bristles, which when the dog bites down on the, on the ball, it will knock off the plaque. Because like he said earlier about the, uh, the plaque is very hard. So we need something to knock it off, but not injure the dog while they're doing so. So we decided to go with these uh, small bristles, which would do that. And our ball is a two-piece design model, as you see here. You have the top layer and the bottom layer. Uh, it can be uh, different colors. We chose, you know, this uh, red and another color on top, uh, just to give it more uh, eye candy for the purchaser. Uh, so again, it, it detaches. So you put the ball, I mean, the uh, treat inside. So um, like bacon bits. So if your dog like bacon, bacon bits or any kind of uh, treat it prefers, you put that item inside the ball, close it up because it, it's like a, a cap twist. You would twist that on and then throw it to your dog and let him uh, chew on it. You know, the pace of going outside to your dog is chewing on it, thinking it's you know, having a great time, but it's actually cleaning his teeth while doing so. Um, and it's 100% recyclable. We chose a thermal plastic, which is a kind of a durable, um, user friendly plastic, which can be machine washable. So once you do finish playing with you know, your dog is finished, you know, getting all the bacteria off his teeth. You can take that, detach it, put it inside the uh, dishwasher, let the dishwasher, you know, do his thing, and you can take that dishwasher, and the next day it's fine to go. Um, we chose recyclable because we know how we want to be. We're very uh, earth friendly. We want to be very, you know, with the earth. We don't want people using our product and leaving it out or losing it, and then uh, causing a lot of pollution on the earth. So we chose 100% recyclable and it's safe for the dogs. And yeah, that's what we really, that's what the ball is really meant for, just you know, taking care of the everyday problems that the dog has. Uh, next, I'll be passing on to Naoli, our product manager, and we'll discuss. Thank you, Cedric. Um, <clears throat> my name is Naoli, I'm the product manager. Uh, first, I want to focus on um, the difference between uh, human toothpaste and dog toothpaste and why we think we needed to create this. Um, first and foremost, uh, dog toothpaste is different because they have different teeth. Uh, human toothpaste um, is not for consumption. You don't want to swallow it, even if you are a human, but obviously we're smart enough to spit it out. Dogs, on the other hand, would like to swallow it. So when a human brushes his dog's teeth with human toothpaste, they run the risk of getting their dog um, unwanted diseases, such as liver disease. Um, it also uses xylitol, which is used to make your toothpaste sweeter. Um, that also can't be consum uh, consumed by a dog. Very problematic. And finally, fluoride. Uh, that can lead to depression, seizures, and even cardiac failure. And all of these, if extreme, can lead to uh, death in your uh, dog. So the main difference is um, humans consume a lot of sugar, and uh, that in turn gives us different bacteria in the human mouth. Uh, dogs, for the most part, don't consume a lot of bacteria, which is why they're less uh, frequent uh, to get cavities. It's more uh, prevalent in human mouths. Uh, that's why we had to design a different toothpaste to attack different types of bacteria. Um, that, yeah, that can lead to a whole bunch of different painful gum diseases and things like that if you're not brushing your teeth's dog with the right toothpaste or even if you're not brushing it at all. Um, we have actually packaged our ball with a toothpaste to come with, a starter pack, and afterwards you're allowed to just keep on purchasing just the paste while you uh, keep the ball for use over and over again. And we work with three companies primarily for our production and all experienced and all uh, were credible in their field. Uh, our first company is Star Thermoplastics. This is our partner uh, for ball manufacturing. Uh, they're experienced with tough product and 
The reason I would recommend them is because they allowed us to craft our ball the way we wanted it while uh, using their thermoplastic material, which Cedric just touched on. Uh, Nutrix USA, this is what uh, allowed us to make our toothpaste the way we wanted, uh, adding what we needed to add to make it uh, specifically for dogs. Uh, they are also very experienced in creating dog toothpaste as well as other animal toothpaste. Um, Assemblies Unlimited um, gave us a full turnkey service. Uh, this just makes it easy for um, the distributors and the users because it's packaged and packed in a way that's easy for everybody to use. Um, from there, I'm going to pass it on to our finance director, Nadra Hassan, who will touch on why you want to use a hygiene ball rather than some of the other competitors. Thank you, Leo. Hello, everyone. I am the financial advisor for our hygiene ball. Um, today, I want to discuss with you guys some of our competitors. Right now, our primary competitor is Briskly. Um, this company markets a toothbrush stick that has internal space for toothpaste. Um, their product lacks clear instructions and it has a very short expected lifespan. Despite that very short lifespan, their product is not recyclable and its design is not um, compatible with full coverage bristles. Now for um, dental, dental dog ball products, our competitor is Boschel. This company has a product that doesn't allow toothpaste to be used um, while the dog is using it. Um, their product actually relies on owner supplied treats while, uh, so the dog, while the dog is using the product, it's eating its treats and that kind of defeats the whole purpose of the bristles. Um, just imagine trying to clean your teeth and you're eating, that kind of doesn't make any sense. Now for uh, traditional dog toothbrushes, um, this style of cleaning your dog's teeth is highly impractical. It causes, uh, it puts the dog and the odor in a lot of stress and it puts the dog in a very uncomfortable situation. Um, the owner has to force the dog into like a very uncomfortable position and uh, a lot of owners express uh, fear of violating their dog's trust, um, which causes their dog to avoid them. And um, it's, it's, it's a, it's a good way of cleaning your dog's teeth, but it's, you know, it's 2019, there's other new products that are a lot better than the traditional dog toothbrush. And unlike all of these companies that I've mentioned, we are actually 100% recyclable and we are um, Veterinarian Oral Health Council certified. Um, this kind of sets us different and sets us further from all of our competitors. And um, our product is 100% recyclable. And as you guys may know, a ball is um, a dog's favorite toy. So it turns a scary activity into a very fun um, bonding time. Now I will turn it over to Natalie from Marketing. Hi. So our uh, design for marketing is based off three components. Firstly, we're going to look at the internet side of things because this is the 21st century. We're going to partner with respectable uh, influencers in dog blogging and on YouTube. And secondly, we'll be looking at covering a target city. We'll move city by city. And when we choose a city to target, first it's going to be Seattle, which is one of the most popular cities in the country for dogs. We are going to fill billboards and public transportation with our advertisements and truly uh, cover the city with our products so that dog owners are repeatedly getting impressions. And thirdly, we partner with veterinarians. Now remember, since 80% of dogs are going to experience some kind of this periodontal disease by the age of three, they are constantly seeing patients and their owners who are struggling with this aspect. And a lot of them don't want to brush a dog's teeth because of how difficult it is using a traditional toothpaste. So when you go into a veterinarian's office and you show them an effective alternative that is fun for the dog and doesn't cause any kind of trepidation in their owner, they're excited to partner with us. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about the financial side here. We have um, calculated that the, uh, sorry. We've calculated that the production cost per unit is about $4.10. We're selling the entire kit for $16.99, which is actually competitive and a 
more, uh, more competitive price than what some of our competitors are selling for, often pricing their products at $20. Now, I'm going to show you how your money is expected to double over five years. We're looking at 20% growth each quarter. This is because of the great need for our product, as well as looking at comparison to how product, or sorry, companies similar to us have expanded over the years. I would like to show you, well, invite you. Now, I'd like to invite you to what we are creating here, which is the hygiene ball, which uh, gives our fellow feline, or sorry, not felines, canines, our fellow canines and owners an opportunity to maintain their health without any kind of distress whatsoever in a truly unique way that is effective and uh, prevents a host of disease to these furry friends of ours. Thank you. Are you asking for 10,000 or 100,000? 100,000. What, what percentage ownership? At 2% ownership. 10? I said 2% ownership. Who? It said 4%. Excuse me, four percent, four percent ownership. I'm sorry. This is four percent is so that your investment will double. Two percent at two percent, uh, that is where the company would be. A hundred thousand would be two percent of the company in five years. Um, how much does it cost for each element, and how much are you selling it for? Because you've got two components to your product: the ball and the two paint. Uh, the ball, I believe, is the cheaper component. Uh, it is only it's only a dollar ten, I believe, and the toothpaste was more expensive at a dollar forty. Transport and partnering with a group that is creating the packaging and providing a full turnkey service and actually distribution. There's a distribution and packaging and packing all in one facility. This is the rest of that. And do you have any sales already? No, we do not have sales yet. So you're valuing your company at two and a half million. With, but it's at five sales. years, no sales. No, we have not so, begun sales yet. Y'all are our, our initial investors. This is why your move could look to double your investment because y'all are the first people putting your money and your faith into this product. How close are you to being ready to actually have some sales? Uh, we are looking at. We have already spoken with our production partners and are ready to start production in the next month. I, I really like this and I am you know, worried we're here with QVC. So if I put you on TV and we sell out, how how many units can you get out quickly? Uh, our minimum run is 10,000. Maximum, we're going to go to 100,000. Is there a reason why you just focus on canines and not cats as well? Is it, was it not a market for it? Uh, less so. It, gum disease is a much greater threat to dogs than it is to cats. How committed are you to the name and the, the packaging? I mean, Hygie Ball, it doesn't scream dogs. You know, would you be willing to kind of rethink some of that packaging? Possibly. Are you thinking about marketing? Well, I am the marketeer. You know, that's kind of what I bring to the table as a shark. Um, I really like the product, but I, the hygiene ball doesn't say dogs to me. I think the packaging showing the dog's face is more of what screams dog. The hygiene ball name was chosen because it is pressing the medical aspect of baseball and hygiene, rather than simply thinking of it as another toy that you expect to pick up for $2 and will probably fall apart very soon. It also keeps us open for future extensions if you decide to work with other animals. I, I understand that, but I'm married to that name because I'm, I'm not married to it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, walk me through the process with the, with the ball itself. With the, so toothpaste, you, what do you do with this kind of Square on the inside of the ball, outside of the ball, how is it? It covered on the outside for the bristles. Okay, storage. and how many ounces, how big is the tube for that you're getting? I'm trying to figure out, just kind of get a visual of the package and how frequently the consumer will have to repeat 
The uh, starter, the, excuse me, the starter toothpaste is a little bit smaller, but it's meant to go for at least a month. And then you purchase secondary product, or sorry, secondary toothpaste that can last for up to six months. So people buy a tube of toothpaste every six months yes. if they're a user and buy the all one. Yes. I have a question for the science people. Um, is this a uh, ball patented, meaning the design no one else can have approved by the NMS? Do you have a patent on it? Uh, we currently do not have any patent for the product, but we are the case. So you're in the process. We are in the process. You have your application in. As far as the marketing piece of it and getting your brand name out there, we had thought about signing together the subby partner because pets and celebrities go hand in hand and you guys thought about something like that to kind of catapult your product out there a little bit quicker versus trying to do it the old school. I'm not saying you're doing old school, but traditionally, and even the internet is, is pretty common now, but Usually, you could be tagged with a name that might sometimes can help. I'm glad you mentioned that. We were somewhat focusing on internet celebrities when we were looking at the internet, but in terms of more um, the celebrities one traditionally thinks of, gum disease actually most commonly threatens smaller dogs. So a lot of these celebrities also have smaller dogs. It's the traditional lap dog, rich lady kind of combination. So that is actually perfect for our product. How much have you all already invested in the company? Uh, we have a loan uh, to $50,000, which we are ready to start using for production. We are expecting to go into production in a month, as I mentioned. Um, what is your market? So your, your total market of dog owners, let's say the 40%, are never going to buy this. What's the actual number of people of the 60% of dog owners? What, what is the number of dog owners? That we're marketing to. Uh, most of these dog owners that are infrequent users, uh, they're, they wouldn't be, or sorry, infrequent brushers, shall we say. They're infrequent brushers. They wouldn't be brushing their dog's teeth at all if they didn't understand that that's something uh, was important with brushing their dog's teeth. Yeah. So the reason they're infrequent, even though they understand it's important, is because of some kind of difficulty. All of those infrequent uh, brushers are our target because we believe that they're much more likely to... Do, do you have a number? Oh, sorry, a number. Yes, we expect about 30% of dog oh, runners. But what number is that? Oh, like for, million, for the million. U.S. or for a target city? Your target market. How many people would buy this? What's your market? Unfortunately, I don't have that number off the top of my head. Uh, in fact, dogs are more common in America now than children. Is there a reason you had to get into this pet stores as a, as a vehicle? Oh yes, no, they're part of our distribution. I didn't mention them as part of the marketing. So you have the science people, you have the veterinarians behind you, they've signed off? Yes. Safety, so you, you're, are you guys saying that a piece of this would not break off and potentially, potentially swallow, be swallowed by a cat? Uh, yeah, we have a dog chart of our setup. We didn't have add this to this uh, PowerPoint, but we do have a chart that uh, certain size dogs get a certain size dog and make sure that the bigger dog doesn't swallow the ball and not just tear it and you got to do it. We don't want the dog to swallow the small ball. So we have a chart that uh, can point its first dog size. So <coughs> So you're looking at 100,000 and 2% on 4%, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, it's 4%. 4%, that okay, will allow you to four. double your investment in five years. Well, I'll start. Um, I'm not a dog person, so I'm definitely not in the target market. And I don't feel like I'm the right person then to support growth of your company if I'm not fully bought into it. Um, I also don't know that putting in $100,000 when you only have 250 and in cash, which should entitle me to only 4% of your company. So for those reasons, I'm not. Okay, I will, I think you have something here. I think you're, I think you're, there, there's definitely a market for this. I'm questioning how you get your product out. Uh, as far as, 
um, the marketing of, of, the, of the product itself. I think you're going to need to do more. You're not going to have, I don't think you just put it up, post it, and then it's, people are just going to buy. I think you're going to need something to do it. And I think that's where my company will help you out. But I will be willing to put 150000 into your company with a 20% ownership of the stake in the company. Would you go in with me? Well, it depends what you're looking at. Well, I was thinking more that, that if there's going to be two sharks, yes. we're going to need like 30%. Okay. You know, they're going to need my expertise getting yes. that out on QVC. So, so we yeah. bump that a little and more. Bump up our group. Yeah, 30%. Okay. All right. And I think they're going to need more than 150. Okay. What is it? 250? Yeah. All right. 250 for 30? Well, let's go 40. All right. 20%. It's going to be a lot of my time. And I need more than double my money yep. in four years. All right. Yeah, that's what we're that's what we're offering. So say that offer one more time. You're doing two hundred fifty to forty percent stake in your company. So you're valuing it at a little over half a million, which yeah. is really generous because you have zero sales. Yes. And no patent. And and no patent. Yeah. But I'm gonna. I mean, once it goes on QVC and we have my cute little beagles on there, this is gonna sell out in a day and you need the money for production because you need to deliver it as soon as people buy it. And I think your star power will help get the catapult here. Oh, thank you yeah. so much. Hey, you know what, you're a partner, so we got to do better yeah. sure. That's the part I was thinking about. You need something that's going to catapult your, your product up to differentiate yourself between other competitors. So that's what I'm thinking. I'll say a second about your uh, patent concern, or I think that was yours. Uh, speaking to our lawyers, there is nothing on the market that is remotely similar to our screwing mechanism for closing the ball. So we are expecting that patent to go through successfully. But uh, you were offering 250 uh, grand for 40 percent. What do you all think about 30 percent split between the two of you for 250? You know, it's a lot of my time and expertise that I'm going to be pulling into this. So I really need to have that. that I'm stick with it. I agree. You guys can you guys can huddle up if you want because with my team and in particular my financial advisor to do 40% we will need a larger investment. Do y'all have a counter offer? What were you thinking? 35. Uh, sorry. 3 you have 150. Well we can do that but I want to get 50 cents a unit paid back to me um, until it's initially paid back. Until it's initially paid back. Yeah. I, I believe we can do that. 